Well, welcome to the session tonight. I thank God for you, your hunger for the Word of God. My prayer is that you've been fasting as the Holy Spirit has been leading you. You've been praying. You've been staying close to God because in a time in which we're in, we need the presence of the Lord. We need to get closer to Him like never before because of the situation, because of the crisis, and because of the, the times that we're living in. So I thank God for the Holy Spirit that has kept us through this pandemic up till now and he will continue to keep us long as we continue to follow his holy spirit be led by his word let's just establish his presence let's just establish the presence of the lord father i thank you tonight god i thank you for your holy spirit i thank you for your keeping power over your people god and we do not take it for granted because we know it's your mercy and your grace that has kept us even though many has lost their lives god you have seen fit to preserve us and to keep us and Father, for that we say thank you, God. We thank you, Father, that we have not tested positive and we declare that we will not because we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And Father, help us to keep Psalms 91 as our guard, as our shield, and as exceeding great reward, as your word says. Now, Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the teacher. We thank you and I pray your blessings upon each one that will tune in tonight to the session, to the Bible study, God, and that you will speak to our hearts, you will quicken, remind us of things that we need to be reminded of so that we can use them, that we can be victorious during this time of crisis. And Father, I thank you now for our harvest tonight. God, I thank you for the harvest that will be brought in through this teaching tonight. And God, that will go all around the earth as the internet goes all around the earth tonight. It will touch hearts, change lives for your kingdom in an eternal way. And you will be praised. You will be glorified in Jesus' name. Come on, say amen with me. Say amen with me because we declare that is done and he is going to be glorified. Hallelujah. So we thank the Lord again for you tonight. Thank God for our prayer time, our prayer session that we just uh, came out of. That intercession is so important because that is one of the keys that will unlock the blessings and the benefits of the kingdom. So that's what we're going to stay with tonight. We're going to stay with the, our, our subject on the kingdom of God because we know that this in this time we must understand some things concerning the kingdom of God because God's kingdom is in the earth and it is coming to the earth in the kingdom of heaven. It's coming to be set up on the earth, but God is preparing us for what's coming. And, 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 and this teaching on the kingdom, folks, don't take it lightly because this was the message of Jesus. This was the main message of Jesus. Jesus came with one message, and that message was the kingdom of God. In other words, he said, well, this came I forth to preach the kingdom of God. He said he started his public ministry. His first public message was in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. He says, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And I say, just like my Lord did, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That means the kingdom is here. But the kingdom is also coming to the earth. So we thank God for knowing these things and having the revelation of these things because I do believe that this will be the message until Jesus comes. I tell you, the Holy Spirit has me locked into this vein of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, so that you and I can understand the benefits of the kingdom and how to unlock the benefits of the kingdom. And so we, we, we uh, taught on last Thursday night concerning the key and the keys of the kingdom of God. So we have established the fact that the key, singular, is the Holy Spirit. In other words, he is the key that will give us the keys to the kingdom, keys of the kingdom of God. It's the Holy Spirit. So we must get to come to a realization to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, to know him, that he is God with us now. Thank God for the Holy Ghost, that Jesus sent him back just as he said he would. Uh, when he was about to be ascended, he told those disciples, I will send, I will apostello you another comforter who will abide with you forever. He will guide you. He will teach you all things, bring all things to your remembrance, and he will be the unction that will cause us to function. So I thank God for the Holy Ghost that, that's our keeping, uh, our keeping power. He is the power of the kingdom of God because what Adam lost, Adam lost the presence of God. Adam lost the Holy Spirit. So Jesus came back on a, on a singular primary mission of restoring back what Adam lost. Adam lost the power of the Holy Spirit. He lost the presence of God. And with that, Adam also lost the authority. He lost the ability. He lost the creative power of God. And he lost the dominion of God. But God has given that back to man and mankind 
uh, through the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, who came and gave us the Holy Spirit. So he's given us back everything that Adam lost. And we must come to the realization of who we are and what we've been given. So we thank God tonight for the Holy Spirit. So tonight we're going to look at, we're going to we're going to use for a subject, the keys of the kingdom of God, the keys of the kingdom of God. As we establish the fact that the Holy Spirit is the key singular, but tonight I want us to look at the keys, and, and, and these keys are very important, especially in the time in which we're in with this uh, coronavirus pandemic. This is, uh, is, take, is hitting the third wave, and, and, and they are predicting things which I declared will not come near us. They're predicting things concerning this wave of, the, of this virus that could be worse than the others. But we declare Psalms 91 and verse 10, No evil shall befall me, neither shall this plague. I'm talking about this coronavirus plague come near our dwelling. That means my dwelling, and that means your dwelling. It will not come near us. Why? Because the angel of the Lord can't round about us. We are the citizens of the kingdom. Glory to God. We've got to keep that in mind that we are citizens of the kingdom, that we are a member of, of another kingdom, that we're not, we're in this world, that we're not of this world. We are of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need to thank God for the revelation of these things during this time because this is so important that we know these things because it's the keys. Now hear what I'm about to say. It's the keys, the use of the keys of the kingdom that's going to bring us through this crisis. We've got to use these keys in order to come through this crisis. And, and it's the use of these keys that will bring us through these crises, you see, because what use is as is, is having keys and not knowing how to use them. I used uh, last Thursday night my key ring. I, I showed you my key ring. I said, if I give you this key ring and say, just go and open some stuff, you wouldn't know what to do. You wouldn't know which key works what or what key was for what. So it is with the church, much of the church in the realm of the spirit. God has given us keys. God has given us authority. He's given us access. He's given us uh, 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 legal rights to some things, but we don't know what they are when we don't know how to use them. And these things are the keys of the kingdom of God. So I want to read from Matthew chapter 16. And I want to start with verse number, uh, verses 18 and 19, where Jesus delegated and he gave these keys to Peter, who was the apostle that was the, the lead apostle of the church during that time, because Peter received revelation. Peter, Peter received revealed knowledge of who Jesus was. And because Peter received that revelation knowledge, and that's what is so important during this time, is that we get revelation knowledge of the things of God, of the secrets of God, and of the mysteries of God. And, and a lot of this revelation has to do with the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. We must get revealed truth concerning these things. So Peter received revealed knowledge when Jesus asked whom the men said that I am. And then Peter said, thou art the Christ, that is the anointed one, really was telling that Jesus was the Messiah prophesied in the Old Testament. He said, the son of the living God, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Then he says here in verse number 18, Matthew 16, 18, Lord, I thank you for the word tonight. God, let it be seed, let it be revelation, let it be power, let it be fire tonight. Let it be the ax, the hammer, and everything that you need it to be. Let your word be that sword that will divide asunder the spirit and the soul and the joints and the marrow in Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God, just receive that. Let the word will be all of that for you and I tonight. Okay, he says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, he says, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He said, And I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, bind in heaven, shall be bound on earth, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So what Jesus did here, Jesus gave Peter the access to the kingdom of heaven. He gave Peter access into the kingdom of heaven. In other words, keys give us access. In other words, keys give us the right and the access. Keys give us the legal right to access the provision and the benefits of the kingdom of God. So we must know and understand what these keys are. And we must understand how to use them because these keys are the, that which will cause us to survive and still be standing when this pandemic is over. I'm telling you right now, we've got to know and we've got to use the keys. I say we've got to use the keys. So what good is having keys or having a key and not using it? 
And that's what's been happening, folks. We've been, we've, we, God has given us these keys, but we have not been using it because we have not understood what they are and how to use them. Jesus said, I will, and I give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In other words, these keys give us the right to access some things, to open some things, but it also gives us the right to lock up and shut down some things. Now, I want you to notice there's some things that we have been given authority to shut down. And first, we've got to shut it down in our own lives. I said we got to shut it down in our own lives. Now, I'm saying take authority over everything that's coming against you by using these keys, by using the keys that he's been giving us. And, and uh, we're going to we're gonna go into this tonight because this is so important that we use the keys. Why? Because these keys are our means of survival through this pandemic and through these perilous times. We've got to know how to use these keys because if you don't use the keys, you won't make it. I said, if you don't use these keys, this 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 time will will will, 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 will overtake you and you will not be an overcomer. But I declare tonight victory for you in every area of your life that as you get a, a fresh revelation of these keys and you'll begin to use them in your life and they'll begin to produce the benefits of the kingdom of God. You can say amen to that. Glory to God. So, so, so the Holy Spirit, I mentioned the fact that the Holy Spirit is the main key. The Holy Spirit is the main key. In other words, he has given us the Holy Spirit. In other words, he has given us the Holy Spirit through the new birth. In other words, level one of the Holy Spirit comes to us through the new birth. Then he's also given us the power of the Holy Spirit, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which we all must partake of. In other words, we all must be filled with the Holy Spirit during this time. So uh, uh, the, the, the only uh, way the keys can be useful to us, we have to use them. And we have to know when to use them, and we have to know how to use them. So tonight we're going to look at at, at, a, at a couple of the keys tonight that that that's going that's very important during the time in which we're in. So we thank God for the Holy Spirit. So last in our last session, we talked about the key of knowledge. We we mentioned the fact that the key of knowledge was so is so important now because Jesus said to those uh, Pharisees and the lawyers in Luke chapter fifty two, verse eleven. Luke 11, 52, Luke chapter 11, verse 52, he told those, those Pharisees, you shut up the key of knowledge and you wouldn't use it, nor you will allow others to use it. In other words, he's talking about the spirit of religion. And I want you to know the kingdom of God is not religious. It's, we're, he, we're not religious people. We're kingdom citizens. So he was speaking to those religious Pharisees who, 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 would, who would block the people from knowing the truth. Why? Because they wanted to have the priority. They wanted everybody to look up to them so they wouldn't share the knowledge with anybody else. And I want you to know uh, the church, the true church is not like that. As an apostle, I want you to know what I know. I want you to have the revelation that I have. Why? Because we are, we are working in this together. And the more you know, the better equipped you, you are, the easier my job will be and the more we'll be able to accomplish. So, but he told those Pharisees that you are, sh you are shut up the key of knowledge. So in, in Luke 11, 52, it lets us know then that knowledge is a key. When I say knowledge, I'm talking about revelation knowledge, revealed truth. You see, because it's revealed truth that'll change us. You know, I, I used to be a cigarette smoker and uh, I knew that cigarette smoking was bad for my body and, and was bad. It was wrong. Even after I was saved, I smoked for a little while. But when the Holy Spirit gave me revelation of the dangers of tobacco, Man, I threw that pack of cigarette away and never picked up another one. Never smoked another one in my life. In other words, although I knew it was bad for my for my body, I didn't stop till I got rev revelation of it. When God revealed that thing to me, that that thing was destroying my life and destroying my body, man, I got rid of it in a New York minute, man, because it's revelation that changes us. That's why we've got to get revelation knowledge. That's why we got to have the apostles and prophets back to be the, 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 the foundational gifts of the church. Why? Because the apostles and prophets bring the revelation knowledge to the church. And God's going to be glorified. Why? Because he still have apostles. He still have true prophets that he's raising up in these last days. And I want you to know the apostles and prophets will be at the forefront. In just a little while, they were going to be recognized because they will empower the church and they will carry the anointing. So, so the knowledge, revelation knowledge is very important. And, and I want to give you some revelation knowledge tonight concerning some things concerning 
uh, 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 the keys of the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom. So, so what I want us to look at tonight, uh, first off, I want us to really look at the key of faith, the key of faith, the key of faith is a very important key. And, and, and we must understand that the key of faith is, 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 is a vital key that will cause us to survive, cause us to overcome. Now, I know we've been taught a lot of things concerning faith, and we, well, some folks say, well, I understand faith. No, you don't. No, you don't understand the fullness of faith, and there's some things that you have been taught that you've forgotten. But I'm just going to remind you of some things, and I will remind us of some things concerning this key of faith. Why is the key of faith so important? The key of faith is important because all the other keys work from the key of faith. In other words, prayer, uh, uh, intercession, I'm talking about fasting, everything else we do works from faith. In other words, we've got to be constantly have faith in God, trusting God, believing God in everything that we do and everything that we hope to accomplish. Why? Because faith is the key that works all the other keys. In other words, uh, faith is like the key that unlocks the other keys. Why? Because without faith, the Bible says it's impossible to please God. Now, I'm going to I'm going to go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to go real basic tonight because this is where we are. This is what we got to have. Uh, to establish what is faith. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, first thing I want you to want to emphasize, what God, I want to give you a revelation of, is that faith is now. Faith is not in the future. Faith is not in the past. Faith is present. Faith is now. Hebrews 11 uh, verse 1 says, now faith is. So we have to understand and operate by now faith. Not by, I believe God is going to happen next week. I believe God is happening right now. Why? Because everything that we need is already accomplished and it's ready for us now. Why? Because when we, when we kind of understand that faith must be now and that when we declare things, we declare it from a position of now faith. In other words, that faith is now and I believe I'll receive what I ask, what I declare, what I decree right now. We've got to know that faith is now. Come on, say faith is now. Say my faith is right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In order for us to survive, we must know that faith is now. Faith is present. Faith is present. You see, because God works in the now. He's the God of the past, the present, and the future, but he's the God of the now. He's a right now God. And I want you to know he's delivering you and I right now. And he will continue to deliver us now. Why? Because my faith is now. I believe God is, is, is dealing and God is moving right now. See, because he says now faith is. See, so when we declare something, when we pray for anything, we got to pray from a position of now faith. In other words, right now faith. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Faith is now. He said now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So we established the fact that faith must be now and faith is the substance. Faith is the reality or the assurance. In other words, it's already provided. It's already produced. It's substance. It's a substance in the spirit realm. And I want you to know, we call things out of the spirit realm into the natural realm by faith. What you don't have, declare it by faith. Why? Because it's already it's already done. It's already made in the spirit realm. So with our now faith, we call forth the substance out of the spirit realm into the now realm, all into the present world. He says the substance of things hoped for. Other words, other words, our faith must be accompanied with hope. Other words, we 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 hope. We, we have faith and we also hope, which is another type of belief uh, and we are uh, an expectation. So if I got a hope, I got an expectation. I got an expectation that God's going to see us through this pandemic. I got an expectation that we will be able to come back for services and will not have to social distance. We will be able to come back for service and not have to wear these masks. I have a hope because my faith is now and I'm declaring it now. Come on, we, come on, declare that with me. Say, now faith is. Faith is the substance and we will have what we decree. The Bible says we'll have what we say. The Bible says we'll have what we say. We're going to look at that in Mark 11 in just a little bit. But he says, now faith is the substance of the thing hopeful. The evidence of things not seen. Other words, how do, what is the evidence? I got the evidence because God said it. 
That's all I need. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. I got the evidence because if God spoke it, God will bring it to pass. If God spoke it, then it is. Hallelujah. So, 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 so we have the evidence of things not seen. In other words, faith is believing what you can't see. Faith is believing what is not yet manifested. Faith is believing that it's already there, already made, already done in the realm of the spirit. And all we've got to do is declare it with now faith. Glory to God. If you need a financial provision, declare it with now faith. You need a healing in your body, declare it with now faith. Because when you speak it, you just call that substance out of the supernatural realm into the natural realm. Hallelujah. Well, in other words, death and life is still in the power of the tongue, folks. In other words, Job said, we shall decree a thing and it shall be established in the light of God or shine on our, our ways. So I decree, I, I decree this pandemic will not touch me. I decree this pandemic will not touch my household. This pandemic will not touch my family in the name of Jesus. Why? Because he'll give his angels charge over me based on the word. So we got to declare based on the word. So, so he said, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now I'm going to drop down to 11.6, old famous in Hebrews 11.6. He said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe it that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words, he said, okay, so without faith, we can't please God. So if I'm going to please God, I got to have what pleases him. I got to have faith in God. I got to have my trust in God because it's only faith that pleases God. Faith pleases God. Why? Because faith works all the other keys. In other words, if I got faith, my prayer will work. If I got faith, my praise will work. If I got faith, my, my, my worship will work. My obedience will work. My, my holiness will work. My integrity will work. Everything that concerns to God works from faith. Why? Because faith pleases God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got to believe him. You got to trust him. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own, own, own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. Why? God is looking for faith. That's why Jesus said, when the son of man come, will he find faith on the earth? Oh, glory to God. He wants us to have faith in him. So, so faith is that which would cause all the other keys to work. And faith is the, also the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Now, faith is a key. Faith is a master key. And a key is a tool that releases and opens and unlocks things. In other words, faith, uh, faith is the key also, as the key also that is a sign of our authority. In other words, when, when we use that key of faith, we're operating in our authority. And I want you to know this unlocks things, but it also shut downs the devil. In other words, it, it looses and it binds. It frees and it cuts off. In other words, by faith, we stop the enemy in his tracks. By faith, we declare thus far and no more. By faith, we declare blessings be loose. We say favor come. We say deliverance come, healing come, and we declare it by faith. So if we're going to release that faith, glory to God, hallelujah. If I'm going to release my faith, I've got to speak. I've got to declare some things. I have to declare what God has already promised me through his word. And I did. I got to declare it with now faith. I say, I got to declare it with now faith. Okay. So, okay. So, so, so we, we thank God for the Holy Ghost because you see, because this is so important. This is very basic, but this is very vital and very important to where we are now because it's going to take the use of these keys and the key of faith is a major key that we must use during this time in order for us to survive this pandemic. I, I, I know that uh, I've been taught faith. I've heard so much about faith. But folks, let me tell you something. Faith is so important now. Faith is more important to you and I now than it ever was before. I'm telling you, it's, it's vital for us now to operate in the faith that God has given us. Because you see, the faith that we have does not come from us. It comes from God. Hallelujah. He, he said, it, God gives us a portion of his faith. Yeah, well, isn't that an awesome thing? To know that he, you can have a portion of the faith of God. Hallelujah. He, uh, Romans 12 verse 3 says he gives to every man a measure of faith. In other words, he gives us that measure of faith, which is a portion of God's own faith. And I want you to know, once we receive that measure, what we do and our hunger can increase that measure. 
uh, uh, the measure. In other words, the more we hunger after God, the more we uh, hear more of his word, the more we pray in the Holy Spirit, the more we desire to stay filled with the Holy Spirit, the measure of faith is increased. I said the measure of faith is increased because he gives us that measure, but it's the, our hunger that brings increase to that measure. Okay, so I'm going to Hebrews chapter, uh, not Hebrews, but Mark 11. This Mark 11, yes, Mark 11, 22, Mark 11 and verse number 22, where Jesus told those disciples, Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God, for verily I say unto thee, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he will have whatsoever he saith. So, so what Jesus is telling them, that we must have faith in God. And, and one, one, one trans, another translation says, have the faith of God. Why? Because the faith that we have is the measure of God's faith that he gives to us. And, and that's a portion of God's faith that we must have. So, and Jesus also illustrates and he describes how that faith is used and how it is released. In other words, you got a mountain in your life. You got something in your life that won't move. You got something in your life that, that you didn't order, God didn't plan, and you want that thing to move. Jesus said, if you will believe in your heart, he said, if, uh, if you will say to the mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and not doubt in your heart, you will have whatsoever you say. So begin to speak to that mountain. Begin to speak to that thing. Hey, Jesus spoke to a free tree and, and the root, and it died at the root. You can speak to that mountain that's in your life. I don't know if it's a relationship. I don't know if it's a sickness, an illness, or whatever is in your life, a financial situation, a family problem, whatever that is. Begin to speak to that thing. Talk to it. Tell it in the name of Jesus to remove and be cast into the sea. Tell it to be removed and not, not be a part of your life. Command that thing to uh, uh, bind it up and cast it out of your life. Why? Because Jesus says you can speak to a mountain. I know I, I know this coronavirus is a mountain. I've been speaking to this mountain. I'll continue to speak to this mountain till this, till this thing get cast into the sea. And I declare in the name of Jesus, we're about to see it cast into the sea. I say, coronavirus, be gone. Be cast in the midst of the sea because I don't doubt in my heart and I speak from a position of now faith. I speak from a position of now faith. I call those things which be not as though they already are. Glory to God. So he says, if we don't doubt in our heart, see, and that's where the enemy will put, put in our heart is doubt because doubt blocks faith. I said doubt blocks faith. But if you get rid of the doubt, then, the, then your words will take on power. The, you, you will activate the army. Like I told you, I told you on Sunday, we are not the army. We activate the army. The angels are the army. Why? Because the battle is in the spirit realm. We can't go into the spirit realm. We are the citizens of the kingdom. And you know, the citizens never go to battle. The citizens never fight the war, but the citizens uh, support the army. So when we speak, we activate the angels who was the host of heaven and they do battle and they remove the things of the enemy. They remove the things out of our life. The angels cast the mountain into the sea and because we're not going down in our heart. Jesus said in verse 24, therefore I say unto you that whatsoever things you desire, what do you desire? He said, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe that you shall receive them and you shall have them. In other words, you believe when you pray. You don't believe after you pray, you believe when you pray. That means I believe right now because my faith is now. In other words, if I'm praying, God, I'm believing you right now that this is mine right now in Jesus' name. So what, what, what Jesus taught those disciples is how to exercise and how to release their faith. How to, how to use the key of faith and we use it by speaking. Like I said, you need to start speaking to some things. You need to start declaring some things. You need to start calling some things with a, which are not into existence. And I want you to know God will bring it to pass. Why? Because faith is a key of the kingdom. I said faith is a major key of the kingdom. Now, I'm going to share some things with you about faith. Then we're going to move on to a second key tonight as, as our time permits. Okay, faith, faith is also the beginning of the supernatural. Faith is the first level of the supernatural. Why? We come to God through Jesus Christ by faith through the new birth. That takes us into the supernatural. Faith is the first level of the supernatural. In other words, faith is the entry level in the, in the spiritual things into the supernatural. Why? Because there are three basic levels to the supernatural. There's the level of faith, level one. 
Level two is the anointing. And hopefully we'll get to talk about the anointing some tonight as, as key number two. And, and the third level of the supernatural is the glory of the Lord. I want you to know we're going to go from faith to the anointing and into the glory. I'm telling you, when that glory hits, devil, you better look out. When that glory hits, signs, wonders, and miracles, supernatural, the atmosphere of heaven is coming to earth. I said the atmosphere of heaven is coming to earth. Why? Because the atmosphere of the earth is air and oxygen. The atmosphere of heaven is glory. Hallelujah. When that glory, that holy smoke comes to the earth, I want you to know the presence of God and heaven will be established on the earth. Okay, so we, we establish the fact that, 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 that faith is the beginning of the supernatural. Faith in, in God puts us into that supernatural realm. And I want you to know the supernatural realm is more real than this natural realm. Okay, so faith gets us is the doorway into the spiritual, into the supernatural. We got to become more aware of the supernatural because everything in this natural world comes out of the supernatural world. And we access that supernatural realm by the key of faith which is the first level. Okay, faith also is uh, faith also is the currency. Faith also is the currency, or we would say the money, that we can purchase things in the spirit realm. You know that we have dollar bills, we have uh, money that we use in the natural, but faith is spiritual money. Faith is a spiritual currency that we buy things out of the spirit realm and we buy it with the currency of faith. Hallelujah. So how do I spend how do I spend my, my, my spiritual currency? I spend it by speaking. I spend it by loosing my words based on God's word. I spend it by declaring decrees. I release the money and glory to God. The, the, the products that we desire come. In other words, we go shopping spiritually why, where we release our faith, glory to God, hallelujah. How about let's do some more, let's do some more spiritual shopping. Let's spend some more spiritual money because faith is the money that brings in the produce or brings in the blessings that we need. And we release it when we speak, okay? Faith also destroys fear. I said faith also destroys fear. Why? Because fear, there's a lot of fear in the land now. There's a lot of fear. A lot of people are afraid. A lot of people are afraid of this pandemic. A lot of people are afraid of the police. A lot of people are afraid of the economy. They're afraid of losing their health. They're afraid of dying. There's a lot of fear in the land, but I want you to know, fear, faith destroys fear. Why? Because faith is the opposite of fear, and it's by faith we overcome. I said it's by faith. We overcome fear and everything else the devil has. First John chapter five and verse four, he says, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. In other words, faith destroys fear. It destroys sickness. It destroys disease and every other work of the enemy. Because I want you to know fear is a primary weapon of the enemy. Fear is a primary weapon of the enemy. And we've got to overcome fear. Do not let fear set in. Because uh, the Bible says uh, in, in, in 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. In other words, when we love God as we should, because perfect love is that first love of God for us and our love towards God, that makes our love uh, mature when we love God as we should. And when we love God as we should, that perfect love will cast out all fear. And I want you to know, I love God with everything that's in me. My prayer is that we all get to that point that we can love God with everything that's in us because it's that perfect love that will cast out fear. Why? Because fear destroys, uh, faith destroys fear. I said your faith destroys fear. If you're in faith, you're not afraid. If you're in faith, you're not afraid of this virus. If you're in faith, you're not afraid of, of, of racism, the police and, and, and the economic situation. You're not afraid of losing your house, your car. You're not afraid of any of this stuff. Why? Because we operate in faith and faith operates by love and perfect love casts out all fear. Amen. Galatians chapter five, chapter five and verse six says, faith works by love. You want your faith to work, start loving God. And you love God by demonstrating your love. You love God by giving. You love God by helping others. You love God by demonstrating your obedience to God. Why? Because love has to be demonstrated. And, and, and faith works by love. Faith works by how we love God. Through us, our, us loving God, it causes our faith to work. And God will be glorified. And also, we know that faith comes by hearing. 
The more the word of God you hear, the more your faith is built. Romans 10, 17 says faith comes to us by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, the more the word, the more we expose ourselves to hearing God's word. Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more our faith is strengthened, our faith is increased because it comes by hearing. And also faith comes by, faith is increased by praying in tongues. Faith is increased by praying in the Spirit. Jude verse uh, verse 20 says, Building yourself up on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. And that's something that we must do on a regular, on a daily basis like never before. We must, we must pray in tongues. We must pray in the Spirit. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, my prayer tonight is that you get filled with the Holy Spirit. And you begin to use that prayer language. And for you, believer, who the enemy have stolen your prayer language, I declare tonight a reactivation, a reigniting of that fire on the inside of you, and that you will pray in tongues with a tenacity. You'll pray in tongues with a fervor and a, and a zeal and a fire like you never had before. And God will be glorified. Why? Because that builds our faith. The more we pray in tongues, the more we build our faith. So faith is increased through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Faith is increased through praying in tongues. Faith is increased also through meditation on the word. A meditation on the word. In other words, you got to meditate on the word. What Psalms 1 said, uh, uh, we must meditate on his word. How, how much? Day and night. In other words, that scripture you, you read, just lay there and just meditate on it. Just think about it. Mull it over in your mind. Just think about it. Ponder it in your mind. That meditation caused faith to increase. And, and he says in Psalm 39, around verse 1 and 2, he says, as I was meditating, that fire will start burning. Meditate on the word. That's something that we don't do. We do too much worrying. We do too much fretting. We do too much, uh, we enter too much anxiety and depression. We don't do enough meditating on what God has promised us. You start meditating on what God has promised us, the peace of God will rule your heart. The peace of God will, will, will keep you in perfect peace because your mind will be stayed on him and his word. Perfect peace comes through meditation on the word of God. So faith is also increased by meditation. And I say again, faith is exercised by speaking. And I want you to know if you want anything to become stronger, you got to exercise. You want your physical body to become stronger, you got to exercise. Yes, I'm talking to you now. You got to start exercising even a little more because that strengthens the body. But exercising our faith happens when we speak. I'm looking at first, second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. He says, having therefore the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. Other words, because I believe, I speak. I believe that God will secure us. I believe that God will see us through this. I believe that no evil shall befall us, neither shall any plague come near our dwelling. I believe that we are under the shadow of the Almighty. See, I'm speaking now. Uh, that's why he says in Psalms 91, I will say, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. You see, we release and we strengthen that faith by speaking. And this is so vital for the time in which we end because the key of faith must be used because it's the keys of the kingdom that's going to see us through this crisis, going to see us through this pandemic. And I declare that we will be able to come back together for services and not have to social distance. I'm declaring my faith. I'm speaking right now. And you declare that with me. And we'll have whatsoever we say, and God will be glorified. So the keys of the kingdom are that which give us access, give us authority, because one of the one of the one of the the the, the, the symbols of keys is authority. In other words, and that's one of the major uh, keys of the kingdom is authority. So the keys gives us and puts us in that position of authority, and God's going to be glorified. Okay. So in the time that we have left, I want to touch. I want to kind of open up the second key that I want us to look at tonight. As, as, as we have, uh, went over some things concerning the key of faith, so much more we could say about faith, but just to give us a, a, a jump start and a reactivation of faith in our lives so that we can operate and unlock and even lock up the enemy whenever we have need to with the key of faith. Okay, so the second key I want us to look at tonight is the anointing, the key of the anointing. In other words, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is very vital. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is very important for the time in which we're in. 
Now the anointing is the measure of the power of the Holy Spirit given to the believer. It's the measure of the power of the Holy Spirit that's given to us. Now I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. And I want to look at this 27th verse here because the second key I want us to look at tonight is the anointing. And the anointing is the power of God. It's the measure of the power of God given to you and I as believers to carry out God's assignment in the earth. It's the measure of power. Now, here where we go into that second major key, which is, which is power, which is the ability of God, the creative force of God, this is what the anointing is. It's the measure that's been given to us as believers. And what does the anointing do? Isaiah 10, 27 says, It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away off thy shoulder and his yoke off from, from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. In other words, the enemy wants to put yokes on us. He wants to bind us up with fear. He wants to bind us up with depression. He wants to bind us up with sickness, disease, and all this stuff that, 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 that God didn't send. He wants, to, he wants to yoke us up with all this stuff to hinder our progress and to stop our ability to carry out our assignment. But he says here, he says, in that day, which day is he talking about? The day after Jesus was crucified, uh, uh, ascended, and sent the Holy Ghost back. In other words, he sent the anointing back. And we're in that day. Thank God we're in that day. He says, it shall come to pass that the burden shall be taken off of thy shoulder. I declare the burden begin to lift off of you right now. That whatever you've been carrying today begin to lift off of you right now. The refreshing to come to you right now because I release the anointing right into your life, right into your soul, right into your spirit. Receive that anointing to, to lift that burden, that weight and that care and that worry. He says, the burden shall be lifted from, taken away from thy shoulder and the yoke off of thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. In other words, that measure of the Spirit of God that God gives to every believer. In other words, it's yoke destroying, it's burden removing, and it sets the captives free. I said it sets the captives free. So the anointing is that portion of the Holy Spirit that he gives to you and I as believers. And we thank God for the presence of God. Now, now the anointing is very precious. The anointing is not to be taken lightly. And the anointing must operate in a vessel of integrity. In other words, we must be people of, people of truth. We must be people of honesty. We must be people of obedience to God if we're going to carry this anointing. We must be people of holiness if we're going to carry the anointing. Because when we were born again, we, we get that measure of the Spirit, which is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the anointing is the manifested presence of God coming to us through the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the anointing. Why? Because the anointing is what's keeping us. The anointing is what, what empowers us on a daily basis. So, now, now, now to understand some things concerning the anointing, I said the fact that it is the manifested presence of God. The anointing is the coming upon of the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's that Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Okay, it says there's an anointing that comes upon, but there's also an anointing within. The anointing that comes upon is the anointing of power or for power or for the ability of God to work through us. And I want you to know God's ability wants to work through you. God's ability will work through you because I'm speaking it over you right now in Jesus' name. And so our faith must be in the anointing. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. It says that your faith should not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. In other words, you must put that faith that we just talked about, that key of faith, must be channeled toward the anointing. In other words, you believe that it is the power of God, it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit that's going to see you through this pandemic, that's going to see you through this coronavirus, untouched, unscathed, and even stronger than you were before. Faith must be in the power of God or faith in the anointing. Why? Because the Bible said the kingdom of God is not in word only, but in power, but in anointing. And we declare that will be the case in your life in Jesus' name. So that anointing that comes upon is the anointing to carry out the assignment. The anointing within is the anointing to cause us to live this Christian walk and to live and to become more Christ-like. Why? Because he puts the Spirit of God within us and he changes us from the inside. Glory to God. I want you to know that Holy Ghost changed me on the inside. Glory to God. And if you get changed on the inside, 
you like better and live right on the outside. Amen. So we thank God for the Holy Spirit. Now, now that there are levels of the anointing. There are levels of the anointing that we must be aware of. And I want to share uh, this with you. I'm headed to Ezekiel chapter 47. Ezekiel chapter 47. And we'll see the levels of the spirit, the levels of the anointing. And verse 47, chapter 47, verse 1 of the book of Ezekiel. He says, Afterwards he brought me again to the door of the house, and behold, water issued from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward and behold there ran waters ran out waters on the right side now here's a vision Ezekiel is having a vision here of the river of God hallelujah he's, he's, he's seeing the river of God and he sees the levels of the river and I want you to know there are levels of the anointing and your level of the anointing is determined by your hunger how much do you want the presence of God our hunger determines our level you are where you are because of the hunger that you have glory to God so if you want to increase your level increase your hunger your desire for more of his presence he says and when the man that had the line in his hand verse 3 uh, went forth eastward uh, went forth eastward and he measured a thousand and he brought me to the waters and the waters were to the ankle now here the waters represent the river of the Holy Spirit now he has waters to the ankle waters to the ankles is level one of the spirit this is the born again experience and this is the spirit indwelling us on the inside waters to the ankles waters to the ankles other words we are now kingdom citizens we have come into the kingdom of god by faith in jesus christ we have received the first level of the spirit which is waters to the ankles and i want you to know waters to the ankles is where we start but god don't want us to remain just ankle deep too many believers are just ankle deep in the spirit they haven't hungered they haven't been taught they haven't been uh, exposed to the holy spirit as god would have them do waters to the ankle waters to the ankle as i said this is the level that we enter in to the kingdom of God. We enter in to the family of God with waters to the ankles. This is where born again, we're indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Then he says here, verse four, and he measured again a thousand, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. Now here he goes out, it's like he's walking out in this river, river, and he's getting deeper and deeper. We're talking about levels of the anointing tonight. We're talking about levels of the spirit that God wants to take us deeper. I said, God wants to take us deeper. He wants to take you deeper, but you got to have a hunger and you got to have a desire. And I want you to know, don't be afraid of the river. Glory to God. Don't be afraid of the water because there's no danger in God's waters. By the words, nothing but blessing and peace in the river of God. Here he, now he has waters to the ankles. Waters to the ankles is the second level of the Holy Spirit. This is the baptism of the Holy Ghost in fire. This is that second experience that the disciples received on the day of Pentecost. In other words, they received level one when Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost in that upper room. And they received level two on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came as, as a sound from heaven cloven tongues as a fire sat upon each one of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. Level number two, waters to the knees is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Other words, they now, they, 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 they receive the, the ability to begin to operate in the fruit of the Spirit. I want you to know the fruit of the Spirit is so important. In other words, because the fruit of the Spirit, level two takes us into the fruit of the Spirit. That's, that means you got to have character. You got to have godly character. You got to be trustworthy. You got to be truthful. You got to be a person of your word, godly character. You got to have love, joy, peace, long suffering. The fruit of the Spirit comes with level two. The fruit of the Spirit comes with level two. I want you to know you got to develop the fruit before you can start operating in the gifts. Because if you just go after the gifts and don't have the fruit, you won't last long. Because this is what happened to God's generals, men and women in years gone by who, who, 
who were mightily anointed, mightily anointed by the Holy Spirit, but they did not have the fruit of the Spirit operating in their lives. They had no character. They, had, they didn't have godly character, and they did not live out half their days. So level two, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, brings us into the character of God, which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, comes with waters to the knees. Waters to the knees. I said waters to the knees. But I want you to know, he didn't stop there. He didn't stop there. He says, and again, he measured a thousand, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the loins. In other words, now, he, he, he's, now he's waist deep. In other words, he's, he got waters to the waist. In other words, he's waist high in the water. Oh, glory to God. It can get scary when you get this deep sometimes. But I want you to know, this is level three of the Holy Spirit. The question is, how deep do you want to go? Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're about to hit level number four here in just a little bit. Uh, but waters to the waist or waters to the loins is when the gifts of the Spirit starts to operate. The gifts of revelation, the gifts of utterance, and then the power gifts begin to operate. The gift of faith, the working of miracles, and, 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 and uh, the gift of faith. In other words, the power gifts begin to operate at level three. Waters to the waist. The question is, how deep do you want to go? Glory to God. We're talking about the key of the anointing. The key and the levels of the anointing. And he didn't and he didn't stop there. And verse 5 he says, And he measured a thousand, and then it was a river that could not be passed over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, and the waters could not be passed over. In other words, Ezekiel said the water got too deep that I couldn't walk across the river anymore. Now, when you hit this level, the Holy Spirit is in total control of your life. In other words, you're not in charge. You're not in control. Why? Because the Holy Ghost carries you. The Holy Ghost leads you. The Holy Ghost moves you to where he wants you to go because you're now swimming in the water. You're swimming in the river. And, and, and this is level four. This is that level of spiritual maturity that God wants us all to achieve. But we got a hunger and thirst, and we've got to go after it because these are the levels of the anointing and the levels of the river of God. And, and he says here in verse number 12, and, and, and by the river, and by the river, and upon the banks thereof, on, on, on this side and on, on that side shall grow all the trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall their fruit thereof be consumed, and it shall come to pass. And, and, and it shall bring forth new fruit according to his month, because the waters they issue out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof shall be for medicine. Other words, this water issued out from the from the temple, from the threshold of God, it it it, it, it formed the river. And I, I want you to know this is the same river that John saw in the book of Revelation. He said, I saw a river. Of crystal clear water, Revelation 22. This is the same river that Ezekiel saw, but these represent the levels of the anointing, the levels of the Holy Spirit. And folks, I want you to know He's about to take us. He's about to take us from the knees, from, from the ankles to the knees, from the knees to the loins, and from the loins to waters to swim in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You better get your scuba gear ready. You better put on two tanks because we're about to go deep in the river of God. I'm talking about the glory of the Lord is about to come upon planet earth and it's about to come upon his church because we're going to use and operate in the keys of the kingdom of heaven and God's going to be glorified and he's going to be exalted and the enemy's going to be defeated. You know, and the waters ushered out from the temple. The order, the waters ushered out from the temple. Hallelujah. Look at that. Look at, look at this. We are the temple. Those, this river should be flowing out of us. Isn't that what Jesus said? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I'm talking about wherever we go, we, we, we expose the river. We release the river of God. And wherever the river goes, life is produced. I'm talking about salvation life. I'm talking about harvest life. I'm talking about people coming to know Jesus Christ. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Supernatural healing. The dead being raised. Creative miracles. Because of the river of God that's about to flow out of the church. And this river will also serve as our provision and for all that we need will come through the key of the anointing and the key of faith. Folks, we've got to be established in the things of God like never before. And I want you to know the anointing comes by our hunger, fasting, prayer, spending time with the word of God, 
being obedient to the Holy Spirit. Let him lead and guide us into all truth and, and, and repenting of sin on a daily basis. All these things increase the anointing in our lives and God will be glorified. Use the key of faith and the key of, and the, key of the anointing will come upon your life and that yoke destroying, burden removing power of God will be at your disposal as you use these two keys in the time in which we live. Because folks, I want you to know, if we don't use the keys, we will not survive these perilous times. But if you use these keys on a daily basis, and you use that key of prayer that we talked about, repenting on a daily basis, making petitions in faith, making supplication in faith, with your now faith, declaring those decrees, calling things which are not as though they already are. And I want you to know, you too will survive. You will be anointed, empowered to be one of God's weapons in these last days. And God's going to be glorified. My friend, my time is up. When the Lord bless you tonight, my prayer is that the word of God is spoken to your heart and that that faith will rise up in you like never before. And you will demonstrate the power of God as you use the keys of the kingdom of God. Thank God he's called us to be kingdom citizens and he's given us all that we need in order to be victorious and to survive. But we have to use the keys that we've been given. I want to pray with you before we close tonight. I want to pray with somebody tonight. Father, we thank you for every listener tonight. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your anointing that's been released through the spoken word tonight. Now, Lord, if there is anyone that don't have not come into that first level, have not come into the kingdom, let, let them pray this prayer right now. Come on, pray this prayer. If you need Jesus, you say, Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. I repent of all of my sins. Come on, say that. And I receive Jesus Christ tonight as my Lord and my Savior to give me a new life, to fill me with his Holy Spirit, and to anoint me for the assignment that God has for me. Thank you, Jesus saving me. My friend, you prayed that prayer. Greatest miracle that you need. The supernatural power of demonstration of a new life. You'll be turned into another man or another woman for the glory of the Lord. And if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, pray this prayer with me. Say, so, Lord, I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit and your power tonight. Renew the Spirit of God within me. And God, let my prayer language come. Let my prayer language return with power and effectiveness. And I thank you, Father, for the power of the Holy Ghost to come upon me now in Jesus' name. Now receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Let that prayer language begin to flow out of you like never before. Lord, fill them tonight. Fill that woman tonight. Fill that teenager tonight. Fill that deacon tonight. Fill that bishop tonight with the Holy Ghost and with power, God, tonight. And God, we thank you for an army being raised up as we obey you and we use these keys in Jesus name. Now we declare the defense of Psalms 91 over your house, over your life in Jesus name, that no evil shall befall you and this plague of coronavirus or no other plague shall come near your dwelling. And I speak blessings over you tonight in Jesus name. May God bless you. We thank God for your time with us tonight that the spirit of God continue to teach you, lead you, direct you raise you up to be a strong disciple in these last days. And may the kingdom of the Lord rest upon you. We thank God for you. Remember, this this Sunday we will be doing uh, Feel the Fire Live again, 1030. You too, join us. The presence, the power of God is going to be here. We're going to be releasing a fresh word concerning the kingdom of God. You don't want to miss that. And uh, we thank God for you tonight. And until the next uh, broadcast, until the next YouTube session, this is by the Apostle Rufus L. Smalls, your, your dad, your brother of the Lord saying I love you want the best for you and be all you can be use the key of faith use the key of the anointing and do that which will make you strong in these last days but the Lord bless you in Jesus name let him be glorified see you next time stay safe keep your mask on when you go out and stay safe keep yourself preserved be wise and God will be glorified in Jesus name God bless you